<sighs> I quit. I quit 2018. First, I can't buy a GPU while maintaining my organs. Then I can't buy memory, and now it's a CPU. So when is this one gonna be over? Stay tuned. I'm so pumped to announce the long-awaited release for MassDrop's collaboration project with Sennheiser, the HD58X, a successor to Sennheiser's first-in-class HD580 headphones. The HD58X is an audiophile's dream, and at just $150, it's able to outclass headphones at over twice the price. And while this is a sponsor, I'm serious. If you don't believe me, check out what the experts had to say. If you're interested, definitely check those out before they're sold out in the description below. Welcome back to GamerMelt. Intel's 8th generation desktop processors delivered the first bump in core count across the board since the core brand's inception all the way back in 2008. Coincidentally, it preceded the unbelievable announcement of AMD's Ryzen. Needless to say, Intel's 8th generation was a much-needed performance increase that, for the first time in a decade, gave previous core owners a very serious reason to upgrade. And sales have been reflecting that, with the i7-8700K at the top of that list. What do you know? When you make a good product, users buy it. Okay, before Ryzen, they didn't have to innovate to still sell, but regardless. It's been nearly a year since the 8700K came out. So why the hell is its price continuing to skyrocket? At one point in February, the CPU went on sale for just $313. Now, when we head over to Newegg, it's at nearly $400. That's nearly $50 over MSRP. Oh, and the 8700K isn't the only chip that's suffering some serious price woes. While most of Intel's Coffee Lake has risen in price, the 8400 is seriously feeling it, having literally risen in price to a point where the amazing price performance CPU it was is nowhere to be found. So what in the world is going on? Well, if you ask Intel, it's purely due to a jump in demand, and that does seem to be true. With servers, enterprise PCs, businesses upgrading, etc., demand for those 14 nanometer chips has risen by quite a bit. And it's led Intel to prioritize production of their server chips, leading to shortages in the desktop sphere and ultimately getting sellers to raise prices. But that's probably not the only reason. For one, Intel has been doing quite a bit more on their 14 nanometer nodes than originally expected. You know, since 10 nanometer was to be released all the way back in 2016, and for sure by this year. But we found out it won't be until next year, and then we found out it actually won't be until the end of next year. So Intel is having some serious last minute issues. But here's the thing. There's little doubt that they've already switched major plants from 14 nanometers to 10, but that takes months of work, so switching them back isn't as simple as a phone call. Basically, it appears to be a perfect storm of sorts that's led to some serious price hikes, but what'll happen moving forward is hard to say. Really, it could go either way, which may seem like a cop-out, but let me explain. First, there's Business Insider, which reported on RBC Capital Market's lowered market price for Intel. The firm had this to say, quote, We think the impact of shortages could magnify in Q4, which normally sees strong seasonal demand. That's definitely not good news for someone hoping to ride this new price jump wave into a price drop. With that said, Intel has made it clear that they're working to solve the problem. Besides spending a billion dollars to expand 14 nanometer production, Intel is also moving some chips over to 22 nanometers so they can free up more space for the chips that have to be on 14. So yeah, Intel is clearly working hard to fix this, but whether they'll be able to before the holiday season or not is really hard to say. In the meantime, I'll definitely say that Ryzen's prices have only been getting better, so anyone considering Intel could certainly find their home over on AMD's platform. Of course, if you're looking for a great headset, don't forget the HD58X. So while that does it for today, what do you think? Were you wanting to grab an 8700K but don't know what to do? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, have a great day.